Welcome to Mailbag, where I spend my money so you don't have to spend yours. If it's your first time here, click on the subscribe button and on the bell icon to get notifications about new videos. Thanks for watching, hope you enjoy it. Right, let's see what's in the bag. Some nut drivers. They're very similar to the other screwdrivers I got the other day, which were a hex, like it's um, Allen key drivers, like hexadecimal. Hexadecimal. <laughs> it's code. Uh, hexagonal drivers, and these are now nut drivers. So it's like the same kind of series, so they kind of match. Similar, they're not exactly the same. The ones actually, the ones I got, they had little caps on them. These don't have caps on, these were hollow. I'll show you. I'll find them. So you go, this is the other type I got. It's similar, I mean, yeah. But these got a little cap on there which covers up the hollow, hollow hole on the end. Pop that out. Does it fit in there? It does, look. Interesting. So I guess there's a whole bunch of people copying each other or something. But yeah, I wanted some nut drivers. Just, sometimes it's handy, you need to be a gun to some nuts and just um, and use those instead. So that's a nice size 7, uh, 5.5. .5 four and an eight so um, I think sevens fairly com commonly used for things so it means should mean getting onto things which are you know in a small hole or something to try and get onto them should be a bit easier trying to get down with a spanner or pair pliers and like you know sometimes you just need night drivers so I've got a few there I think I've got some more different sizes on the way as well I right, see what's in here It's a more. <laughs> it's very similar to ones I've already got, actually. Very similar. Um, um, I've got to be carried away, I think. Yes, so. It seems like there's lots of different people making the same kind of thing. Now, these are uh, 1.5, 2 mil, 2.5 and 3mm size uh, hex or Allen, Allen key bits, here we go, try and get the focus on you alright, so that's what those are, now these should actually be a nice combination with the ones which I just showed you although I'm not sure if I've got duplicate sizes or not, 1.5, 2.5 yeah, might be the same sizes why do I get two different lots of the same thing? Now, if we've got the same sizes, why did I buy two lots? Well, that doesn't make sense, does it? That's all. Why did I do that? Uh, I don't know. Anyway, it also came with um, this set as well. This larger size hex drivers. Weird, it's like page IV. Because, like, I got this set with these Torx, security Torx drivers, and now I've got this set with these hex drivers. Odd, odd, odd. Right, okay, what size are these? That's a um, good question. So that's 3, H3, H4, H5, and H6. So that means I've got 1.5mm up to 6mm hex drivers. Um, obviously these are just a standard hex fit. But it looks like, I mean, the fact that these designs are exactly the same. It's all from the same place, isn't it? You know, it's the same factory. All right, see what's in here.
DV curing adhesive. Here we go. UV curing adhesive. Now I've seen a few videos of people using this stuff when they're doing jumper wire repairs on PCBs. I thought now I tend to use um, this stuff here, right? Liquid electrical tape. It's, it works, it does the job quite nicely, it's a little bit flexible, it's got some give in it, that sort of stuff. Sticks fairly well, not 100%, depending on what service is like, okay? But this is what I tend to use, it's okay. But I'm thinking, well, I have to wait for it to dry, and it can take a while sometimes. So I thought, well, let's get some UV Q adhesive, because the idea then is you expose it to UV, and it cures it pretty quickly, you know, in a matter of seconds, all right? So... Yeah, I bought this and I bought some other stuff too, which is on its way. Yeah, obviously it's not arrived yet, but uh, so I'm, it's got its uses. So I thought, All right, I'll get some for stock. Let's see what's in this big box. I know what's in here, but obviously you don't. It's another project. So the package it will, looks like they've done that. At least on the top. Is it packaged as well on the bottom too? We'll see. Not so much on the bottom, but there's a layer. I mean, it's okay, I suppose. It should be alright. Fairly well done. It's certainly not the worst I've had. Alright. Here's the back. Let's get this thing out of the way. Let's check to see if there's anything else in the bag, or in the box rather. Sometimes there is stuff chucked in there. No, nothing else. Cool. Alright. It's got a marking. He says bad. Something. B input, OK. A input. Something. False reading. Why is this not sitting? It's wobbling. See it? It's got the feet on it. Why is it wobbling? Ah, see that? It's got a big dent in it. Big dent in the case. I didn't notice that in the photos. But then maybe the photo wasn't, you know, if it's taken a lot of that kind of angle, you probably wouldn't see it anyway. So that's alright, I can just straighten it back out again. So that's not too bad, as long as it's not damaging any circuitry inside. So, what is it? It's a Marconi 2 GHz digital frequency meter. So, it's basically a frequency counter. Now, I purchased this because I wanted another little project. I don't actually need another frequency counter, I've already got a whole stack of them. So, well, I've got enough. I think I've got about four of them, something like that. So, I didn't actually need another one. Um, but I thought, yeah, what the hell, let's get another one. And um, it's supposed to have a fault, which I thought sounded like it probably isn't that hard to fix. Um, so input A is supposed to do 200 megahertz to gigahertz, that's a in connector. And um, input B is supposed to do up to 200 megahertz, which is a BNC, which has got a little bit of damage on the edge. Like it's been hit on something. Bypass filter. Resolution options tells you how many digits and how quickly it uh, refreshes or how uh, what the gate time is. So, yeah, this is going to be a future project. I'm not going to do it right now, but it is a project. Adjust internal standard. It's blanked. This is set for 230-240 volts already. I don't have to change it. Um, blanking plate already. Anyway, so yeah, Marconi made in the UK as Marconi stuff was back in the day. I'm not sure what it still is actually. Even though it's, 
I don't know, Mark Arnium is still around, they're doing anything. I don't know, I should actually look, shouldn't I? So our model number is 52435-303Z. And this has got a type number as 900F. 1 megahertz standard, which is a little bit interesting. Um, this foot arrangement is also a little bit interesting. So it should be ready to power up. Should we do it? Because it looks like it's correctly set. Yeah, let's power it up. Let's have a look. Okay, turn it on. Well, we have a display. Maybe that only flickers when it's got a trigger. Quite possible. Thanks to my Patreon supporters and anyone else donated to me through the channel. Um, it helps me to buy items like this for mailbag and keeps you all entertained. And also things like what's in here, things to fix. So um, it helps me with that. Also, I've set up recently a uh, Amazon store. So if you want to buy things through Amazon, go to my store. There's a few things there which are either I use or I think are worth buying. So you might want to go and check that out. So links are down in the description if you want to check those out. Right, let's get started. What's in here? Really good question. These are some circuit boards or something. Uh, I think these might be lithium charge controllers or something like that. 12.6 volt apparently, 8.4 volt down here, 4.2 volt there. Yeah, these are for lithium cells. Or might be discharge controllers or something like that. I'll have to go back and look now and see what these are. I'll chuck links down in the description anyway. 20 ounce rated, it's also got four MOSFETs on there and different voltages. Zero volt common obviously and those ratings. So I think you can actually charge or discharge, it might be a discharge module, I can't remember, but for different uh, value lithium packs. So, a few of those. I was looking at these for my uh, Fluke 540B thermal transfer standard because I'm looking at using a lithium cell for that because it needs one for a reference voltage. Let's see what's in here. What can it be? It's a nut driver. People drive me nuts, so you know, it's only relevant. So what is this one? This is a 6mm nut driver. This is the same as the set which I got before. All these Chinese people, they, these companies, they copy each other. It's probably from the same factory, but they just change the process very slightly, maybe. I don't know. But you can see how they're almost identical. Anyway. You never quite know you need nut drivers. Alright, let's see what's in this one. These look like yeah, 18650 battery holders with the circuit on the back of them. So I think this was like a um, little mini UPS function, so remember rightly. The common ground there, you've got a terminal here which isn't really marked as ours, it's 5 volt, there we go, 5 volt just there. Hopefully we can get it a bit closer so you can see. Alright, so it's just 5 volt just there. Switch option, I can't remember what it's for now. Um, key option, I don't know what it's for either. It looks like it's missing parts anyway. I don't know what the options were for this. And output terminals there, plus and minus. So I think that was to turn the thing on and off, maybe. I can't remember. I'll have to look at the listing. Again, that'll be linked down below. I think I've got these from Banggood. I think it's basically like a little mini UPS, you can run a supply into it and it will charge up the battery, like a 5 volt supply running in, it will charge the battery up and when you disconnect the supply it will carry on running if, if that key switch is turned on or something like that, I can't exactly how it was now, but it will be down in the description anyway. So I've got a few of those, again I'm thinking about these as an option for my Fluke 540B. We'll have to replace a mercury cell, which you can no longer get. Next one. One's a bit heavier. The 
is more. Right, that's it. There we go. That's what I want to drop on the floor as well. I think these are all the same. Look like it. These are just ferrite. Um, ferrite filters. Just trying to get one out and show you a bit better. So there you go. I think it's a 13mm. Um, I'm pretty sure they're all the same size. I did buy a few different ones recently because I know I was getting a bit low on them. Yeah, they're all like the same ones. So, but this is clip over a cable. You know, you've got a mains cable, you click it loose over, and it just helps to cut a little bit of the um, common mode noise out a little bit. It just helps very slightly. So, I have a lot of issues with common mode noise on my bench here because I've got so much test gear on this wall with all these power cables running across the back of all the test gear and power boards and that sort of stuff, right? So it's quite messy. I've got a couple of UPS in here as well, plus a little computer system and that sort of stuff. So I have a lot of common mode noise and I'm just trying to improve it. So I've got a whole bunch more of these. I've got some smaller ones as well, and um, which I'm waiting to arrive. And I'll clip these and all the power leads. I've already got some on some bits of gear. Yeah, I'm just going to put them on absolutely everything to try and get that common mode noise right down. Because it makes it a bit hard to measure small signals when you're doing this test gear. Right, so now you've got this big thing here. This is going to be a bit more interesting. I think I actually purchased, if this is what I think it is, um, I'm pretty sure I purchased this of someone that actually watches my channel. I'm pretty sure it's a viewer who's selling something on eBay, he's like a work for a company that does resale stuff, it would seem. And they seem to recognize me. So I think they watch my channel. So if it's is from you and you watch my channel, then thanks, well done. <laughs> Nothing else in the box? No. Nah. So as you can see, this is a Agilent E3646A power supply. Let's zoom in a bit more. Okay, now, dual output supply. Um, it does light up and stuff like that, apparently. And it does have a fault on one of the outputs. Right, so this is a non-perfect unit, I suppose you could say, because it does have a fault, which is perfect, because that's exactly what I want. So look at the back of the unit there. Well, fine. It's set for 230 volt already. Interesting. Better verify this. This is obviously the these are the sense lines. But this is already marked for 230 volt. Which is interesting considering I got it from the US. Hmm. Okay. Unless they changed it over for me. That's possible, isn't it? Anyway, so this is supposed to be the sense line inputs for these outputs, so you can do remote sensing on it. And you've got well, we've got rear outputs and remote sense outputs or inputs on the back for each channel. So with the links in there, it will um, the output will go back straight into the sense. So it's doing the sensing through these back terminals here, but these I believe are in parallel with the front terminals. 